Uh, people on the streets are saying, let's speak to their union, SAFTU's General Secretary Zolin Zima Vavi and Rifta Ajam as Fedusa's General Secretary. They join us now to talk a little bit more about this. A very good evening to you both and thank you so much for speaking to us. Now, I'm just wondering, I saw a report earlier on saying that uh, there is a proposed minimum increase of wages of 4.5%. Uh, but uh, while this strikes me as positive, are there jobs out there for people to be able to demand this? Mr. Vavi, let me start with you. Well, in our view, the crisis uh, is 400 years. The crisis is uh, 40 years old in terms of where we come from with the apartheid system and the capitalist system itself. The crisis is 25 years of democracy that has truly not prioritized the marginalized in our society, who are the face of uh, poverty, unemployment, and inequality. And that's the working class and the black majority. And uh, the 4.5% on a meagre and uh, ineffectual minimum wage that itself perpetuates the inequalities and the levels of poverty in this economy is going to make no difference. Mm. Further entrenchment of uh, poverty wages in the public sector, such as introducing the temporary teachers and uh, keeping the, the, the healthcare community workers and the early childhood development workers as temporal is not going to help the levels of poverty in our economy. Mm -hmm. So we need to go back to the drawing board all together, uh, the drawing board all together. And that's what SAFTU have, have been calling for and that's what it will continue to call for. All right, and I'll hear just a moment from you, Mr. Vavi, what your expectations then are of the president. But Ms. Ajam, given the scene that uh, Mr. Vavi has already painted, and we know that the State of the Nation Address is often just a, a broad outline of uh, the state of the nation, there's going to be very little detail. I mean, what are you really expecting in terms of economic structural reform? Uh, Sapisa, first and foremostly, good evening to you, to Mr. Vavi, and to your viewers. Um, I think what is important for us to understand as we as we charter or attempt to chart our way out of uh, this uh, pandemic that we've had that has caused mass injury to the millions of workers out there, what is important, even though we do as Fedusa have a shopping basket of items that need to be addressed with absolute urgency, the key and the underlying precept here is going to remain the implementation factor. Uh, we have been known as a country to craft and design grand scale fancy plans, but we have been failing miserably in translating those plans into realities. So we have to focus on the immediate and short term wins that we can capitalize on. So as we move forward in terms of the state of the nation, about our, our, our ambitions and our visions and our expectations, it is important now that we have to focus on that key implementation. And yes, uh, you know, everybody looks towards the state on uh, the state on enterprises and the dismal state they, that they are in. We have only just seen now, as we are charting our way into reconstruction and recovery, the spate of load sheddings that we have been seeing now. So it is totally unacceptable over and above the fact that ESCOM continues to come with over above inflationary increase Increases, increases that are only just going to cripple businesses and the knock-on effect will be workers. So we have to focus on the implementation plan, the social compact that has been designed, and more specifically so, to bring that relief to the millions of workers that have been facing absolute carnage. Mm. And, and Mr. Vavi, what are your expectations against the backdrop of uh, some of the social relief that uh, has been dispensed to the nation, but it's been said clearly not enough, but also against the backdrop of alleged corruption? Well, unfortunately, our expectations are very low, and we think that we are not going to be uh, disappointed when we are a little bit pessimistic about what is going to come from the State of the Nation address. We've already, we already know, we've listened to the President when he was uh, doing the January 8th statement of the ASC, 
We have listened to him when he was presenting the Lihuta uh, resolutions of the ANC, and this is going to be the third occasion where we're listening to him. And frankly, based on what we have listened to already, we see no major policy shift towards addressing the issues that we have just highlighted, the levels of poverty in this economy, the levels of unemployment, in particular as it afflicts the youth and African women, the levels of inequalities, and the levels of corruption in the private sector, and of course facilitated by the public sector uh, hyenas who are hell-bent on feeding their own elastic uh, stomachs at the expense of the poor. So we're calling for the total overall of the economy. In our view, the economy must be restructured such that it is purely and narrowly based on meeting the most basic interest of the poor majority in society for jobs, for clothing, for food security, and for a freedom against violence and crime, a freedom against an, an ineffectual education system, addressing the levels of, a, of health uh, crisis in the economy, now the coronavirus pandemic, in the context of a completely dysfunctional public health care system, okay. ensuring that we have a single health care, a single public education, and we address the climate change calamity that is unfolding in front of our own eyes, displacing hundreds of thousands of our people, killing them in Northern Cape as we speak, All right. and, and creating mayhem uh, everywhere. Mr. Ajam, I, I need to uh, ask a question that uh, the president not so lo long ago was speaking about how they are looking to tweak some things. Uh, uh, public works program is something that he mentioned. But uh, have, uh, just I know from interviews that I've done in the past that people who are employed by this talk about the long gaps uh, between jobs, but also the fact that the money, not only does it not make a dent, sometimes they don't get paid for a very long time, even though they expect it to work. So what I'm saying is some of the government programs that are there to help alleviate the situation, do you think we're going to hear something concrete, something that will make a change in the president's speech? Uh, so, you know, as, as Fedusa, we have long been staunch and uh, pessimists, if I can put that for lack of a better word, of your expanded public works programs in particular. We have long called for government to overall the process. It was initially pegged as a skills development program that was turned around and transformed completely into a poverty alleviation program. Now, the two are completely dis disjointed in terms of its intent. Year and, and the fact that we wanted to upskill, to reskill, and capacitate our workforce to be able to be more attractive and to be able to be more absorptive into the labor market. So the carnage continues when we speak about the public works program here in particular. But what we are what we have specifically called for is this review. There was an investigation undertaken in the Eastern Cape in particular, where we have exposed the municipalities. The municipalities in particular that have gone out on a long shot and using displacement as an opportunity to dilute the decent work agenda that we are promoting as organized labor. And this needs to come to an end because if we are wanting to utilize the national minimum wage as a yardstick to be able to, to give people a better and a decent standard of living as an, as an onset, then we need to okay. equally incorporate those uh, employees and those members that are engaged in expanded public works and other programs to ensure that equally so their wages All are right. brought up to standard because it's currently way below the minimum. All right. Thank you so much to both of you for speaking to us. Uh, uh, that is for Dusa's, uh,
General Secretary Rifta Ajam and Saftu's General Secretary Zuelin Zima Vavi speaking to us on what their expectations are of President Cyril Ramaphosa when he delivers the State of Nation Address on Thursday. Of course, so the SABC will bring that to you live on all of our platforms.